And um, I want to start, if you're comfortable, you s sounded like you had a question that was intriguing. So what were you thinking? Pick the hardest one. What happened to create hazel eyes? Did the two alleles combine, or is it passed? And is it passed from parents to offspring? Okay, so the question is, what happened to create hazel eyes? Okay, and that was the first part. What was the second part? Did the two alleles combine, like green and brown? Did two alleles combine? like green and brown. All right, that is a great question. So, okay, let's do this part first. Okay, so, um, so here's what I want you to understand. We did not specifically talk about hazel eyes. We didn't specifically talk about green and brown eye color alleles. So, um, so this would be a great question for me to ask you for us to like have a conversation about I wouldn't expect that you guys would be able to answer this question factually. What I would expect is that you'd be able to construct some explanations that were at least possible. And more importantly, if I were to, prevent, to present you with something, you should be able to e e engage me with, uh, with an intelligent conversation about it. So let's talk about this for a second because there's a few different possibilities, okay? One possibility is that we have one gene for eye color. Okay, we have an eye color gene. And since, um, since humans, adults, have two copies of every gene, then we would have two alleles for that gene. So any one individual, like me, would have two alleles for that gene. They might be the same, or they might be different. Now, one of the things that I mentioned, but we didn't really focus on, was the idea that um, many traits, eye color almost certainly is one of them, are governed by more than one gene. So the part of, your, part of the answer to your question is there may be other genes involved. There may be like an eye color one, and an eye color two, and an eye color three gene that all contribute. But for simplicity's sake, let's just assume slash pretend that it's just one gene, okay? And so that's gonna make it a little bit easier. With, with only one gene, there's still a couple different ways that we could get hazel eyes, okay? One way we could get hazel eyes is if there is a, a new allele, and we haven't talked about how new alleles arise, but I suggested that it can happen when we have mistakes, right? So mistakes get made, and if there's a mistake, that could lead to a hazel eye color allele. And if, um, if we have a hazel eye color allele and it's dominant, then there's the answer to the question. If I have one hazel eye color allele, then pretty much whatever else is over here, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna have hazel eyes. So that is a possibility. But I think that you all know that that's not the most likely possibility um, because um, hazel eyes have been around for a while and we know that they can't be dominant because we've seen enough like, like heredity, we've looked at enough pedigree charts to see that um, people must, it's got to be more complicated than that, right? Like we're not seeing a pattern of inheritance that would lead us to think, oh, hazel eyes are, a, are a, an allele that can, um, it's a dominant allele, so if you are homozygous dominant, you'll have hazel eyes, and if you're heterozygous, you'll have hazel eyes. It doesn't seem to work like that. There's another alternative, and we didn't talk about this, but I think you're all capable of understanding it, which is that um, rather than having a hazel eye color allele, instead, some of the eye color alleles that are out there already are what we call codominant. 
And so um, green and brown, I, I, I don't know the answer to this in, in terms of the actual alleles, but it, we could very easily come up with an argument that says, well, what if green eye color alleles are dominant and brown eye color alleles are also dominant. And then you would get hazel eyes by having one green allele and one brown allele. What does that tell you about your, your parents? Well, what that tells me, it's, so this is not my real eye color, my eyes are blue, but, but if my eyes were hazel, then that would tell me that, that my parent, my, at least one of my parents had a green allele and the other parent had a brown allele. So if this allele came from, say, my dad, then my dad would have had one green allele and then one other allele. I don't know what it was. I don't know what his eye color was. Maybe it was black. So he might have had a green and a black, and so his eyes might have been closer to black, because maybe with this black allele, we end up with, um, with uh, in combination with a green allele, we end up with black eyes. And maybe, if this was from my mom, she had, I don't know, two brown alleles. So have one parent with dark eyes, another parent with dark eyes, offspring with hazel eyes. And this does happen in general. It's a pattern that we call co-dominance. And, um, and, and this gets at the, um, what I was telling you all about what a dominant and a recessive allele really means. A dominant allele is just one that does something. So in this case, a green allele would produce a pigment that creates a green color. A brown allele would produce a pigment that makes a brown color. Both of those alleles are present. Both of those pigments will be produced. The resulting eye color will be a mix of those pigments. A real recessive allele, like blue eyes, makes no pigment at all. When you have blue eyes, it's not because there is an allele in your eye color gene that makes the color blue. It's because your eyes are blue anyway. You don't have any alleles that produce other colors to mask it. So that's why, for example, I don't have hazel eyes. I have blue eyes. I have two recessive alleles. Those alleles are not producing any pigment at all. It's not changing the color of my eyes. And my eyes were blue to begin with. Yeah? Um, I didn't look it up because I was curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so tell me. So the green, this green, so I'm going to know if it's dominant or recessive. Yeah. It's recessive to brown, but then dominant over like blue. Yeah, so then you've got, that's great. So um, what she said is green is recessive to brown, but dominant over blue. And we call that partial dominance. And so what that has to do with is, is things that are doing something, but it's doing something that could be masked by something else, or maybe doing something in, in a quantity or intensity that's less than something else. So yeah, it can get really complicated. And, and you know, that's one of the reasons why we see so much variety has to do with that complicated nature um, of interacting alleles. Having two alleles um, is real simple. If there's only two possibilities and one is dominant and one is recessive, gets a lot more complicated if we have several possible alleles, blue and green and brown and black, and they don't have a pattern of complete dominance. There's some that are dominant over one, but recessive with another, others that are recessive to everything, others that are like weakly dominant to a couple, and making it really confusing, and that's where um, a lot of the variation comes in. All right, so I'm gonna pause for a second and um, I want you to think about a couple of things. Um, one is, 